Hello ladies and gentlemen, Omnisensei is back with part 3 of the series. What if I isocade into Naruto with World of Warcraft system before the first Shinobi War? If you are enjoying this amazing series and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and smash that notification bell to be updated when I upload the next part. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Weeks had passed since Toborama sensei had died, and the guilt was eating on the inside. Had I been stronger, I could have saved him. Perhaps it wasn't my fault, perhaps it was completely out of my hands to save him, perhaps it was destiny. But when has logic stopped sentimental guilt? All I could do now was keep moving forward, fighting for what he believed in, fighting for what he made me believe in. A foolish thought perhaps, but it was the wind under my wings. Needless to say, his death didn't stop the war. On the contrary, many sought this opportunity as a way to destroy Kanova once and for all. So in response, Hiruzen disbanded the Leaf Strike team. Perhaps it was his way to cope with everything. A sensei's death, his new charge. I didn't blame him. I would have done the same. Hamura and Kaharu were sent to Kanoha to deal with some missions that required their political expertise, while Kagami and I remained on the front lines. My new squad was not exactly happy with me commanding them, but still followed my orders. I suppose I can understand them. It's not easy being an adult, following orders from a six-year-old. My squad specialization was a frontal assault, killing as many enemies as possible, without dying in the process. A rather gory task, but one we were good at. Jonan at the age of six, had two promotions within a year. I think it's safe to assume no one will ever break my record. Something to be proud of I guess. Captain Yumi Yamanaka, one of the many Chunins under my command saluted. The squad was wondering if you wanted to train with us. I looked at her and nodded, in a minute, start without me. I told her, understood, Yumi nodded diligently, and as she left, I couldn't help but wonder, how did they feel I was the one supervising their training? Some of them were old enough to be my parents, funny developments life takes I guess. Saratobi Hiruzen POV being the Hokage was something I always had wanted, just not like this. Not at the cost of Sensei's life. But I was going to make him proud, perhaps I wasn't ready. But I was going to do my very best. But first, those two brothers had to die. And die they would, of that, I would personally make sure of. Hiruzen anger is clouding your judgement and misstated. I know you want to avenge your Sensei. But this entire plan you are scheming, sounds dangerous. I glared at Enma, my summon and sighed. I know, I admitted, my hand gripping the edges of my desk with such force. The wood was giving in under the pressure. But I need to make sure they die I can't focus on peace when those two still breathe. Enma sighed, rubbing the back of his head. But why do you need the kid? Raiden wants to see them dead as much as I do. Maybe even more Toborama sensei connected with him more than anyone, almost like a father would with his son. I explained, remembering how much time Toborama would spend with Raiden. He needs closure, and so do I that death will give us that. You are a crazy brat Hiruzen, and the side. But you count with me just don't let the kid die because of this. I won't, and besides, at the pace Raiden is improving. He won't need my protection, those two monsters will. I stated, looking over the mission files of Raiden, and how the enemy forces were calling him. The Walking Calamity, a fitting name I supposed. Raiden's Senju POV training with my squad was an easy task, at least for me. For them, it was hard, they were weak, but I was not. Well, maybe I was being unfair to them. They weren't weak, they were average. And I was not, though I wasn't sure if I could say I was strong. Defeating a squad of 10 Chunin and some Jonin without breaking a sweat was hardly a big accomplishment. But it was good training, especially when I put handicaps on me, making the entire ordeal all the more interesting. Your attacks are too predictable, you have to make them less direct. I commented as I dodged their combined efforts to take me down. Any tips? One of the Chunin inquired, and I hummed. I would say try to avoid patterns because they can be translated to rhythm. And once the enemy understands your rhythm you lost, I answered, remembering what Toborama Sensei used to say. So mix it up, keep them on their toes, or they will take yours. I have a kid his age, this is creepy, one of the Jonin muttered in the back. Perhaps it is. I chuckled, startling the Jonin. But in war, age is but a number to fill the deceased questionnaire. The question is, how big do you want that number to be? With that said, I flickered back to my tent, where I started to go over Toborama Sensei's notes, and the list of things he had last taught me. I already knew them. But they gave me a sense of I don't know, nostalgia, bitter happiness. I couldn't tell. I promise you sensei, next time I see them, I will be ready for them. 
I promised under my breath tears threatening to dampen my scrolls. At this, DeAndre whined as if saying, don't worry we will bite those fuckers soon, it's okay buddy, I'm not sad. At this my mutant wolf looked at me, his eyes conveying a clear message. One that said, you are not fooling me. Alright maybe I'm sad, but I think I deserve to be, you do. Kagami nodded as he entered my tent. Kagami I thought you were in Kiri. I greeted him. I was, but I finished my assignment earlier than expected. Kagami nodded. I heard what you did in Isla, and the title you got, sometimes I forget you are six years old, sometimes I forget too. I sighed. The Walking Calamity, quite a fearsome title they even updated your bingo entry to kill on sight, Kagami added, and I chuckled. I want to see them try, I replied, leaving my tent. Yumi Yamanaka POV Raiden was different from other captains we had before, he was young for one but extremely efficient, most of us assumed it was because he learned under the second Hokage, who was known as the technician during his lifetime. Others simply accepted the fact he was a genius, a prodigy, and that because of that he was differently. I didn't know what to think, not that it mattered. He was my captain, and had more experience than me, age was nothing but a number, one that in war didn't matter. We have an assignment in Kiri, Raiden, who had flickered to our tent announced, we leave in 10, so hurry up, at this he flickered out of the room leaving us to rush. A mission in Kiri was a bit out of our zone of comfort, normally we would be sent to Isla based on our elemental advantage, or to Suna, but Kiri was unexpectedly new. But I wasn't afraid if anyone could protect us. It was our captain. Did anyone get my kunace? I need my kunace. Yumo the ceiling specialist of our team cried out. I'll give you some, but hurry, we don't want to make our captain wait for us, Suri. Our medic Nin shuddered. I still have the memory of the day he got his first moniker. By killing an army of 1,000 Iowa ninjas, in the most ironic way possible. By bringing one mountain down on their heads, Kuro chuckled. That kid is terrifying am I right? We all nodded. Yumi Yamanaka POV the road to Kiri was rather uneventful. But we all knew what this meant. Soon something would go wrong. It always did, when this type of silence happened. As we skipped through the misty vegetation of Kiri, I felt a massive chakra enter my detection range. There is an enemy incoming, a very strong one. I informed my captain who studied me for a second before he nodded. Any details? Raiden inquired. It's a male, his chakra feels like it. He's excited and maybe a bit angry too. I answered trying to get a better reading of the chakra approaching. I see, Raiden nodded. Once he arrives, I want you all to scatter and let me handle him. I have a feeling whoever is coming is well beyond your pay grade. He was of that there was no doubt. But we were a team, leaving him alone felt wrong. We could help, maybe, but let me assess that Raiden ordered. Soon after, the massive chakra signature I had felt arrived with a loud boom. It was a man of tall and slender physique. He had blonde hair, almost white, and a triangular goatee. Accompanied by a thin moustache, the man had no eyebrows, and his eyes promised death itself. Who among you is the so-called walking calamity? The man asks his tone carefree as if our presence was unimportant. Me Raiden answered, his eyes focused on the target ahead. Holy crap, I knew you were young, but fuck, not this. Young congrats I guess. The name is Jinjetsu Hazuki, and I have to unfortunately kill you. Jinjetsu Hazuki the C second Mizu Mizukage. We have to run, there is no way we can beat this guy. I understand, Raiden nodded. Would you mind letting my squad scatter and leave? Or are you against that idea? A shinobi that cares for his teammates. You have my respect, I won't kill them just for that, Jinjetsu smiled. Scatter. I will deal with him alone, Raiden ordered. But a quick flick of his hand said otherwise. That small but important movement sent a message that said, Hide and let me know anything you catch from him. He wanted us to observe and share with him through the mind-body transmission. Understood. I nodded, scattering with the rest of the team away. Raiden sends your POV. Tell me, began Jinjetsu, are you ready to die? At this, I quickly devised several possible answers. Who knows how about you? Ha ha ha. Fun. Jinjetsu laughed. I looked at him arms crossed and said nothing. He was 10 levels ahead of me, meaning he had the advantage. But I planned to change that. With a smile, I took a step forward as I uncrossed my arms. My legs parted slightly for better support as I waited for my opponent to start. Jinjetsu noticed this, and with a smile attacked, his speed was worthy of praise but not mine, using power word. Shield to add some power. I parried his attack easily with one hand, and attacked with the other, using slam. Jinjetsu dodged the attack in turn by pivoting on itself. With great speed, he grabbed my hand and sent me flying into the air, using the momentum of his move. Using a clone to stabilize, I easily maneuvered back into the ground, just in time to see Jinjetsu pouncing on me again. But I was ready for this, and used Hammer of Justice to stun the Mizukage into place as I cast Rain of Fire. 
Breaking out of my stun, Jinjetsu cursed under his breath summoning a giant clam that blocked my reign of fire. Impressive didn't think you would have Jinjutsu in your arsenal. So Hammer of Justice is considered a Jinjutsu interesting. I will admit it brat, you are very strong. But this ends now, we'll see I retorted by casting Soul Stone on myself, just in case. Looking at the clam, I cast Hunter's Mark on it, because something didn't feel right. My reasoning behind this action was simple, a summon like that had no real battle applications, meaning it was a support type of summon, and those types of summons were the worst kind to deal with. Let's see how you deal with this. Demonic Illusion. Steaming multi-story building. As if on cue, the clam started to expel vapor from its shell, covering the entire area in a deep thick mist. As it did this, the clam started to move without making a sound, hiding as it continued to expel his heavily charged chakra vapors. To complete this, I announced, summoning my fell guard and DeAndre into battle, ordering them to go after the clam. Noticing this, the now hidden Mizukic chuckled. So you can see through the mist, very few understand the nature of my jutsu, and the few that do, die before they can do something about it. In reality, I still didn't understand what was the point of his jutsu. The hidden mist technique was very common in Kiri, but never with a summon, which led me to believe this mist was different to the others. Now the question is, will your summons defeat my clam first or will you die under my illusion? Ah, an illusionary mist, now I understood, meaning the clam was my main priority now. What a frightening technique. Ash Captain, this mist is dangerous, I can feel it affecting your chakra baths. A bit too late Yumi, but still appreciated. I inwardly thought as I ran towards the clam, with no doubt the Mizukage behind. Using bestial wrath I empowered DeAndre, increasing his damage output to the massive clam, as I barely parried an attack from the Mizukage. That managed to cut my arm deep. Cursing under my breath I realized the Mizukage was not going to let me get his summon that easily. Which means I would have to change my approach, using spectral sight. I caught sight of the Mizukage and jumped at him, much to his shock. How can you? In disbelief, the Mizukage lowered his guard for a brief second, giving me enough time to close the distance gap between us. Once in front of him, I unsheathed my tanto and swung my blade at him, snapping out his initial shock. He responded by parrying my blows with a kunai. You are more dangerous than I initially realized. I've been told that. I muttered, jumping back and transforming into my flight form. Not so fast. Jinjetsu shouted, steaming danger tyranny. At this the vapor around the Mizukage started to gather in one place, creating a defective looking clone. But considering he was the Mizukage, I doubted that thing was defective. Looking over where the clam was to check the process of my summons, I noticed it was about to die, thanks to the combined damage my fell guard and DeAndre were dealing. Faster than I could see, the defective looking clone blurred out of sight, appearing in front of me. The creature was fast faster than the Mizukage. Dai Jinjetsu smiled from the ground, as the strange looking clone morphed his arm into an axe, bringing it down on me. In the nick of time, I switched between forms into my guardian form, tanking the attack, and losing an arm in the process. The attack however had brought me back into the ground, where the illusionary mist started to cloud my senses. Aren't you full of surprises Jinjetsu's voice echoed around the mist, seemingly coming from every direction. Turning back into a human, I cast Flash Heal, regenerating my recently cut arm, as Yumi informed me via the mind link, the Mizukage was moving towards his clam, while the clone moved towards me. It was clear the Mizukage wanted to keep the mist active, as it would give him an edge over this battle, too strong to ignore. Using Blink just when the clone was about to strike, I teleported past the clone, and used Aspect of the Cheetah in Sprint, increasing my movement speed exponentially, within a second. I reached the second Mizukage, and with a smile, I looked over the clam and used Shadow Step, teleporting behind the clam. Game over, with a winning grin. I used Execute on the clam, breaking the summon in half. You little bastard. Jinjetsu growled as the mist dissipated. I am both little and a bastard. So I guess you are right on both accounts. I retorted, summing my water elemental into the battle. You really know how to push my buttons just like that bastard of Mew. The Mizukage hissed, his weird looking clone hovering behind him. After I killed the massive clam, the battle rhythm changed. The Mizukage was faster, and so was his clone. At this rate I was going to lose within a few minutes, using the mind link Yumi and I had. I ordered my squad to run back to the base. My priority no longer was to kill the Mizukage, because I doubted I had the power necessary to do so, but to save my teammates. As expected Yumi tried to refute, but I quickly explained to her I had a plan, and she reluctantly accepted, leaving with the team. If I had to be honest, I never intended to win I had hopes for this encounter but not certainty. 
which is why I had activated my soul stone, in case the tide of this battle resulted as I expected. Do you have any idea how long will it take me to grow another clam? Jinjetsu bellowed in anger, six months. Six. That didn't sound as bad as he make it sound, but who am I to judge Chaos Bolt? With finesse the Mizukage dodged my attack and blasted me into the ground with a powerful kick to the chest. Seeing my chakra bar, I knew I was running out of cards. Not that it mattered, all I was waiting was for my team to be out of his reach, while he had said he would let them live. I live by Toborama's principle of never trusting another shinobi, unless that shinobi it's you comrade, and he was not. I have to admit kid, you are strong frighteningly so. But you are a few years too early to kill me, the Mizukage boasted. What was with people boasting before winning a battle? It was almost like a requirement they had to fulfill. Fire release. Great fireball technique. Cutting him short from his monologue. I blasted him with a great fireball. One he dodged by jumping over the attack. Steaming danger tyranny exploding barrage. Doing some quick hand signs, he created five more clones. That cornered me. Die. Soon after he said that the five clones exploded, engulfing me in a steamy skin, ripping prison of agony. That destroyed my body bit by bit. Jinjetsu Hazuki POV the brat was stronger than I had expected. Six years old. And he had managed to kill my precious clan. And pushed me to fight him seriously. Me a cage fighting a six year old shinobi seriously. That alone was a testament to his strength. I shudder to think what would have become had I left him alive. Well, you fought well brat. But I was better. I said to no one in particular. Looking at the blood steaming puddle that used to be him. His innards scattered all around the area, painting the very image of death. With that said and done, I flickered out of sight. There was no point in staying here any longer. In my rage I had destroyed the kid's brain and body, making any information he had a lost cause. When I cast Soul Stone, I wasn't sure how the spell worked. I mean I had never died before. Well, I did. Before coming to this world. But that's beyond the point. The point was I didn't know how my spell worked. How it would react after my death. And now I did. After I died, there was nothing for a very brief moment that is. After that, I was floating above my own remains. It was a weird feeling, with a sense of continuance that I didn't expect. One moment I was alive, and the next I was seeing my corpse or whatever remained of it, all in the span of a blink. It was a somewhat disorientating feeling. Then all I had to do was wait for the Mizukage to leave, which didn't take long. The rest came naturally, as breathing would come. I knew how to force the laws of nature to bring me back to life in my disembodied state, and so I did. That was weird. I muttered under my breath, opening my eyes, once again with the same feeling of continuance. A blink, and I was awake tired and maybe a bit groggy but awake. Time to go back. Explaining to people I could resurrect others was hard, and explaining to them I can resurrect myself was even harder. Not like I planned to do so, but Yumi had felt when my chakra vanished, she had felt my sudden and violent death, and well, I had to explain. I didn't go much into detail, but I explained my squad the basics of what I had done. And the simple shrug that offers one of the many weird times I do. Raiden, Kagami, who had been also sent to the Kiri post greeted. I have good news for you, curious. I looked at him and asked, you do. The gold and silver brothers tried to attack the third Hokage on his mission in Kumo, and he killed them. I stopped dead in my tracks at this Saratobi had killed those two. According to the report I was sent, the second Hokage had managed to kill their entire squad before dying, which left Hiruzen to destroy those two alone, making the whole ordeal all the more easy. Kagami added, and I cursed under my breath. This wasn't what Hiruzen had promised me. He told me, I was going to be with him when they died he promised. In anger, I flared my chakra up, breaking the very ground I was standing up until Kagami put a hand on my shoulder and said, you are scaring your squad. At this I blinked in realization, stopping what I was doing. I apologize. I was angry, not at what Hiruzen accomplished, but that he did so without me there. I wanted to see those two draw their last breaths under my presence. I wanted to see their lives slowly vanish from their eyes. I wanted to kill them, myself. Surviving the Mizukage gave me some unwanted attention. They had even updated my moniker from the Calamity to the Immortal in Kiri, and the Undead Calamity in Isla. It was strange to say something. Reputation. I sighed, opening my reputation tab. It had been a while since I opened most of my tabs, and it was time to check them. 
Kenova Revered Dash 7517-21000 XP Tsunade Exalted Dash 1200-10000 XP Hirazen Exalted Dash 871-10000 XP Kagami Honored Dash 977-12000 XP Nawaki Honored Dash 120-12000 XP Mito Yuzumaki Honored Dash 78-12000 XP Orochimaru Neutral Dash 0-3000 XP Jiraiya Neutral Dash 0-3000 XP Danzo Neutral Dash 0 slash 3000 XP Kaharu Unfriendly Dash 0 slash 3000 XP Hamura Hostile Dash 2899 slash 3000 XP Mora Orphan Matron Hated Dash 0 slash 36000 XP Awagaka Fear Dash 0 slash 120000 XP Mu Hostile Dash 21 slash 3000 XP Inoki Hated Dash 0 slash 36000 XP Kumogaka Hated Dash 0 slash 36000 XP A Hostile Dash 0 slash 3000 XP B Hostile Dash 0 slash 3000 XP Sunagaka Hated Dash 0 slash 36000 XP Karigaka Hated Dash 0 0 slash 36,000 XP Jinjutsu Hazuki hated 0 slash 36,000 XP blinking the tab out. I had to admit, I was surprised Tsunade's little brother had such a good opinion of me. And what was more impressive was that Tsunade still had such a good opinion of me, even though we haven't seen each other in almost two years. Raiden, Hiruzen shouted comically as he entered my room, startling the crap out of me. I need to see if I can acquire some sensing abilities. I have good news. Jesus fuck. I breathe out, glaring at him with the burning hate of 1000 suns. Not next time. You are six I still don't have to knock, Hiruzen winked, and I groaned. What is the good news? Did the war end? Taking a deep breath, I asked. Almost right now, Kumo and Suna are keeping the war on rails. Because they have enough supplies to outlast us or they will, Hiruzen elaborated as he took a seat in my bed, two supply shipments are going to each command point respectively in a week, one shipment for Suna, and one for Kumo. If we stop them, we can force them to sign a peace treaty, brilliant. I muttered in realization. Exactly, so how about we do one last mission? I will take the Kumo shipment, while you and Kagami take the Suna one. The mission parameters are simple destroy the shipment, and leave no survivors, any questions. That was a lot to unpack, but it didn't matter as long as this pointless bloodshed ended. I was in. I nodded, when do I leave? Transforming into my druid flight form, a peregrine falcon, I soared through the skies approaching Suna alone. With my speed it took me 5 hours to get there, where I started to scout the area, locating the supplies that I was tasked to destroy. 1, 10, 20, 40 enemies were guarding the caravan going to the command post in Suna. Now the question was did I wait for Kagami and my squad? that were about 10 hours away, or do I try to nuke the caravan out of existence? None of the enemies guarding the caravan was exceptionally strong. Their levels varied between 15 and 20, meaning I could easily take them. Then again, in numbers I could be overwhelmed. Time to experiment, shadow clone technique. Creating 15 clones. I landed on the ground, with each one of my clones in a different corner, successfully encasing the enemy ninja, Metamorphosis. My clones and I said with a single voice, transforming into hellish demonic creatures, Blade Dance. And so the carnage began, I and my 15 demonic clones, started to cut the entire enemy squad into slices, leaving nothing behind, but the bloody reminder of a massacre, that the sound would soon wash away. I should start using the multi-shadow clones more often. If only they didn't take so much chakra in reality. They were only useful if you were fighting against weaker enemies. Because you didn't have to save your chakra with them. The good thing about clones was that the skills they used were based on the chakra they had percentage-wise, meaning it didn't affect me at all using lots of powerful spells at a time. Joining my hands together I grinned, rain of fire. Soon alongside with my clones, we painted the sky of red as flames destroyed the last hope of Suna. With the mission completed, I returned to my squad and informed them I had to go ahead with the mission without them. Some of them whined, while Kagami simply shrugged saying, less paperwork for me, what a strange man he was. Now, all that was left to do was what I like to call, the waiting game with the Suna supply line destroyed. And here is in destroying the Kumo one, sooner or later all the villagers would be forced to sign a peace treaty, not because they want to, but because the feudal lords will force them to. After all a war without winners, it's rather expensive. It will take weeks before we hear from Saratobi. Kagami sighed, approaching me with a cup of sake, want some. He offered noticing I was seeing his cup. I'm six, 
I chuckled. And, old enough to kill, old enough to drink, Kagami snorted. Besides, civilian rules don't apply to Shinobi, you are legally an adult by Shinobi rules. Never thought about that. I sighed, taking a sip of the drink, is it bad I kinda like it? The drink, Kagami asked and I nodded, only if you make it bad anything is bad without moderation. Fair enough. I chuckled. I can't wait to go back to the village. I kinda miss doing demissions, all this fighting. It's getting exhausting. It is, Kagami nodded. So, e-missions, huh? Didn't do many, I think two or three. I would have to ask Saru. He has my file. He ought to know better than me. I nodded. Only if he can find the paper you haven't seen his office yet, Kagami laughed. I can see how that would be a problem. I snorted. I doubt you will be making any demissions. With all the money this war has made us, I will take a year off. I need it, Kagami sighed, taking a sip of his sake before passing it out to me. Under the risk of sounding stupid and humiliating myself, I have to say I assumed we were fighting without pay. Like you know, I chuckled in all honesty. I had no idea I was getting paid. That shit was never disclosed to me. Of course, we are getting paid. You must have even more money saved in your account than I do. Kagami chuckled. I mean, you have done more S-ranking missions than me. Well shit, I'm taking a vacation then. I chuckled, wondering how much money I had. A few weeks after my mission in Suna, the war came to an end as Saratobi had predicted. I found out about this. While I was on a mission in Iowa destroying their bases, mid-battle, I got a summon from Hiruzen saying that the five cages were meeting in the land of iron to sign an armistice treaty that would last for a minimum of 20 years, enforced by the feudal lords of each nation. I was happy to say the least peace, while momentary was finally here. It seems this is our last mission, Raiden Taicho. Yumi smiled. I looked at her for a moment before I started to laugh. I sure hope so. We all deserve a nice vacation. Oh yeah, Yumi giggled, rolling her eyes. I will probably disappear in the hot springs. Never to be seen again. That sounds pleasant. I chuckled, wondering what I would do after all of this. I had no idea. War defined me, changed me, morphed me into a different type of man. And while I crave peace, I had no idea what I would do with it. For now, I will wait. The moment Hiruzen gives me the green light to go back to Kanoha, there I would figure out what to do next, maybe do some quests. War, while productive in the X game, had no real quest for me. As I waited for Hiruzen to come back from his trip to the Land of Iron with the Sign Treaty, I trained and experimented with my techniques, mixing them, trying new combos, and different ways to apply them in battle, like how mixing Rain of Fire with Blizzard created a very odd, but powerful combination. Or how having multiple clones spamming the same ability, increased the damage output I had in battle. In short, I was testing what I never did before. Stats? I muttered, taking a deep breath, curious to see if my training was yielding any increase in my stats. Name? Raiden Senju level 34 HP. 5700 slash 5700 chakra, 8549 slash 11968 energy, 400 400's fury, Eero slash 200 exp equals 49571 55ths comma 460 stats intelligence equals 374 strength equals 314 agility equals 351 stamina equals 285 none. It used to be easy to increase those bastards. Now my training regime is making no progress whatsoever. Oh well, I guess I'll up my training a notch when I go back to Kanoha. The fuck is that? I mumbled, seeing a small furry creature running towards me. The closer it got, the closer the image became. It was a monkey, a small but fast one at that. Are you Raiden? The monkey inquired, and I nodded, by now realizing this monkey belonged to Saru. Alright then, the peace treaty was a success. You and your squad are free to leave for Kanoha. If you don't want to wait for him to arrive, with that said, the monkey disappeared with a small poof of smoke. First time they don't comment about my age. I inwardly chuckled as I walked to tell my squad about this. As expected, my squad eagerly accepted to come to Kanoha with me, and so I created a portal, a skill Hiruzen doesn't know about, mostly because so far it has no battle applications, as it only works by creating a portal to a city I am welcomed at. You can create portals. Yumi inquired, her eyes shining with excitement. Yes, but only to Kanoha, and only if I'm out of combat. I nodded as I walked through the portal, that connected directly to the center of Kanoha. On the other side, a squad of around 20 Anbu was waiting. Heck the moment I stepped out of the portal, I had one of them pointing at my throat with a tanto. Raiden, the masked individual muttered, his tanto still lightly touching my throat. Put that toothpick back in its sheath. I'm one of you. I chuckled. I kinda understood why they were so jumpy. Maybe I should have sent a raven or something to let them know I had this power. 
So they would expect me suddenly popping in the center of Kenora. His chakra signature matches, one of the Ambu informed. I apologize, one can never be too careful. The Ambu in front of me sighed, sheathing his blade. How many more are coming? He inquired. Only my squad. I answered and soon after my squad started to walk through the portal, one by one. Oh, we should have let them know. Yumi whispered and I sighed. How right she was. Tsunade Senja POV today was like any other day. I was shopping for some food in the market, a few essential things. Nothing much, and then I saw him, Raiden, he was back, he was alive, this meant so many things. The war ended, and I got my friend back. I stared at him for so long trying to process all of this as an array of indescribable emotions washed over me. I just wanted to stare and study every feature on his tired face, trying to see if anything else had changed, and if so memorize it. It was overwhelming. What to say? What to do I waited so long for this war to end. And now, I was unprepared. Should I say hi? Hug him. Wait for him to come to me. What was the right course of action? Sunaid. That voice was still the same. But it carried a weight I couldn't fully comprehend. With trepidation I turned around giving him my brightest smile. Or at least trying to. I'm back. With a faint smile, Raiden extended his arms. Hugging me. Good. I smiled, hugging him back. I knew he had some scars. I could feel it. And now that he was here, I was going to help him, he was family after all. So are we cousins now? Raiden chuckled into my ear. Nope, I snorted. I had asked Grandma Mito about that for reasons. Well, bad for you, cause I am awesome. Raiden grinned, breaking the hug. Joan and I heard. I smiled, not bad as expected of my first student, humble much. Raiden laughed, how I miss this. And that concludes this episode of What If I Isekade into Naruto with World of Warcraft System before the first Shinobi War Part 3. The story will continue in Part 4, so ensure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be updated. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. Omnisensei signing out.